As I previously said, any time that we have a thought, we change the collection of brain parts that are activated, idled, or inactive. By the way, activation is a matter of redirecting oxygen-carrying blood flow to those parts. This in turn results in more electrical activity. This is one of the best examples of how thought changes the organization of energy in a major part of our body. However, that is most definitely not the end of the story. As biofeedback technicians have always known, when you change your thoughts, there are measurable energetic changes in other parts of your body. For instance, by calming your mind, you can change the readings measured by a galvanic skin response device connected to your finger. The same is true of temperature measurement devices that are commonly used in hospitals or even items like mood rings and bio dots. Thus, any change in your thought patterns can and will change how your brain and the rest of your body organize and use energy. Taking this one step further, it is common in modern medicine to use energetic measurement devices as diagnostic tools. Yet rarely do medical doctors incorporate our ability to manipulate energy into their healing methods. If energy readings give them indications of disorders, why isn't it possible that our mind can be used to correct those disorders? The use of suggestion and imagination to create behavioral and even physical changes has long been emphasized by trained and qualified clinical hypnotherapists as well as others who use hypnosis as an adjunct to their field. They have used traditional direct and permissive techniques as ways to create desired changes. Many of these methods are either a half a century or many centuries old. At the International Hypnosis Research Institute, we emphasize the mastery of these older techniques as a prerequisite. Then we add to them newer techniques which have been implied by modern science. The result is an enhanced human communication program called Advanced Neuronoetic Hypnosis. Despite the rich history, traditional hypnosis and related fields like Freudian psychoanalysis, theories and practices are basically over a half century old. Even popular ideas such as cognitive behavioral therapy are at best several decades old. ANH is based upon the latest thinking and research found in psychology, medicine, neurology, and physics. The underlying basis of ANH thus includes recent research, findings, and theory involved in neurology, theoretical physics, mind body integration, and even artificial intelligence. When combined, the conceptual framework is called the neurology of suggestion. It carefully considers the impact of suggestion and imagination from a neurological standpoint. Practitioners who wish to learn these concepts are invited to enroll in the ANH certification program, which is comprised of 12 separate distance learning courses and includes over 75 skills. Please note that these skills are not meant to replace your current approach, such as CBT. Rather, these skills are intended to make you more effective regardless of your preferred methods. I encourage you to enroll in our program today by visiting www.advanced-neuro-noetic-hypnosis.org or you may enroll in individual courses by visiting courses.hypnosisresearchinstitute.org. Of course, you are invited to support the Institute as a member, as well as other benefits. Our small membership fee includes one free course, which may be applied to your ANH certification. Also, members receive substantial discounts on individual courses and the certification program. For more information, visit www.hypnosisresearchinstitute.org.